So good morning, um, Facebook friends, Upper Canada Missionary Baptist Church, and all of you who uh, have tuned in. I'm uh, Julius Hawkins, pastor of Upper Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, today, um, I'll be coming uh, to us from the book of John, uh, chapter number 16, verse number 33. Uh, along with this, right, uh, this we will have communion after the sermon. So uh, if at all possible, you can have your crackers uh, ready or bread and also juice uh, ready to uh, have communion after after the sermon. I would like to, uh, first of all, uh, thank uh, Sister Sylvia Laird, Evangelist Sylvia Laird for uh, standing in last Sunday uh, for the sermon. And uh, we look forward to uh, her doing it uh, again, uh, possibly next uh, next Sunday. Also, we once again appreciate her from uh, from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you, Evangelist Laird, uh, for blessing us with the word of God uh, last uh, last Sunday. We also want to uh, open up with prayer. Uh, some names uh, we'll try to put out there for prayer and um, ask that we just uh, thank God for all that he has already done. Let us let us pray. Dear God, we come before your presence on this morning, first of all, to say thank you. We thank you for all that you have done, that you're doing, and that you're going to do. Dear God, we just um, thank you for another day in which you have blessed us with. Uh, we lift up uh, Sister Mary Haynes, ask you to continue to bless her, God, mightily, her husband, God, and family. Thank you, God, for her, and we, we know, God, that according to your word, that you are the ultimate uh, physician, a great physician, a healer. And we claim healing right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up all those who are sick and shut in. We ask that you may just continue to bless them. Give them what they need, oh God. And uh, we already thank you, God, for good result. And we thank you for the will that you have for each and every one of our lives. Uh, lift up myself to you, God, for upcoming outpatient surgery, we ask, oh God, that you would continue to bless the hospital staff, God, all those patients that are there, we ask that you may bless the hospital staff for their care, their concern, their compassion. Bless the doctors. And bless God all those who are under their care. We thank you once again for who you are, oh God, and we ask that you may, may bless uh, the hearers on today. Uh, bless me, God. Uh, that I may be able to speak a word to your people uh, that you would have on this day. Uh, God, we love you. We thank you. We give you all praise and all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Uh, John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16, verse number 33. I'm going to read that. And then after I read that, then uh, we're going to go into uh, his mighty word that he has for us. It says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So from that, I would like to just, uh, once again, as the title has been laid out for us, you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Why? Because Jesus said it right here in John chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you as he was speaking to the disciples, as they were walking along the way or as they were sitting. He's, he's always talking to the disciples, always pouring into their lives uh, what amen, they need. These things have I spoken unto you. What things have uh, he said he's spoken unto them uh, things uh, such as uh, 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 all the different miracles that he's done and the faith that was necessary to accomplish those things and the, the different uh, information or teachings that he had for them, letting him know that that uh, that he is the vine and there are the branches and and he continued to just share with them as they continue to walk along the way or continue to sit and eat or uh, whatever the venue may have been. He continued just to pour into the disciples and and all the things. And, and then he told them that he was going to have to leave this place. 
But if he leaves, he's going to send them another comforter. And when he sends them another comforter, that comforter has a has a mission, has a ministry and is going to keep them. So he told them all of that. And of course, they were upset even on that. They were sorrowful. And then as he continued on, he he picks it up in verse 25 of chapter number 16 of John and, and begin to share more information with them. But but I just want to come on down to to verse number 33. Where it says, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me, he says, ye might have peace. Because what? Jesus knew that they needed some peace. Saints, today, God knows that we need some peace in our lives. So what happens is that not only do we need peace in our lives, but, but we need peace in this world. But the peace that the world has to offer is not the same kind of peace that God has for us. What God has is real peace, is true peace. And talking about this peace, I'm, I looked that up and, and let us know that peace is just, just like our, our parents often say, especially the mother said, they give me some peace. Whether the children are too loud or, or whether something else is going on, I need some peace, I want some peace. So she had to just steal away. Jesus had to steal away every now and again so he can have some peace, some peace with the Father. We need the kind of peace that Jesus has, amen, for us. He says that these things have I spoken to you that in me, he says, in Jesus, ye might have peace. So it lets us know that, that, I, that, that, that someone who is saved can only have peace in Jesus. He says that in me he might have peace. So outside of him there is, there is no peace. There is no eternal peace. There is no peace that, that can satisfy. He said in him you have peace. So the peace is broken down is, is quietness or, or not only just quietness but, but rest. Have you ever needed some rest? Rest from a weary soul. Rest from, from hard work. But rest. And that's what Jesus said that, that he would give us that we would have it in him. So if we are in him, we have peace, we have rest, we have quietness. We have all that we need in Christ. Speaking of quietness, I love the song. I'm not going to sing, but I love the song. And let me, you tell me what it said. L listen to this. I ain't going to tell you the title. Joys are flowing like a river since the comforter has come. He abides with us forever, makes the trusting heart his home, bringing life and health and gladness all around this heavenly guest banished unbelief and sadness changed our weariness to rest. Like the rain that falls from heaven, like the sunlight from the sky, so the Holy Ghost is flowing in the lonely wilderness. Uh, see, uh, I, I messed that one up real good. So the Holy Ghost is given, coming on us from on high. See, a fruitful field is growing, blessed fruit of righteousness, and the streams of life are flowing in the lonely wilderness. Here's the last verse. What a wonderful salvation where we'll always see his face, where we always see his face. What a perfect habitation. What a quiet resting place. Yeah, James Jones. Blessed quietness. Yep, sure, right. Someone else got it too. Okay, right on. Blessed quietness. And this is how it goes. Is Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul on that stormy sea. Jesus, he speaks to me how the billows cease to roll. See that? How the billows cease to roll. Meaning that on a stormy sea, this is, that's the song here, on the stormy sea, he speaks to me. 
You see, that stormy sea, the storms of our lives is, is all the bumps and everything that, that comes along, which is going to be the next point. But, but all these things come at us. But here's what happened. Because we are in him, he speaks to me. He speaks to you. And when he speaks to you, guess what happens? All those things, all those troubles just glide on the way. It says how the billows cease to roll. Why? Because he speaks to me. Were the billows still going? More likely so. But I was at rest. Beautiful song. I was at rest because he speaks to me. So if he speaks to me, that means I, I have to speak to him. That means that we got to have a conversation going. We got to have a relationship. And when we have that relationship, what, what happens is that we begin to talk and when I'm going through my troubles and when I'm, when I'm going through some downtime and, and when I'm going through some high times, amen, I'm speaking to him and, and he's speaking to me. Communication. Communication. You got to have a receiver, a sender and a receiver. Communication. So, so yes, these things Jesus said, have I spoken unto you? He's talking to the disciples. That in me ye might have peace. So he's speaking to us. We have that quietness, that blessed quietness, that assurance. So first of all, yes, we would have peace only in Christ, only in Jesus. But not only do we have peace in Jesus because we are an overcomer. He says this right here. He says in the world, watch this, in the world ye shall have, check this out, you will have what? Tribulation. You will have trip. Come on, I'm in Christ. I thought everything's supposed to be chill right now. I ain't supposed to have no problem. Everything's supposed to be good. No issues at home and no issues in my life and no issues at work and, and everything. No issues at church, nowhere. But look, in the world, uh, ye shall have tribulation. Where is the world? The world is everywhere around us. The Bible lets us know, he says, be ye in the world, but not of the world. Meaning that what happens is that we are here and we ain't going nowhere until we go home with Jesus. Until he comes and get us. So because we are here, we are in the world, but not of the world. You see, there is a difference between you and the world. There must be a difference because when he comes back, he's coming back for those folk who have been set aside or sanctified, y'all. Set aside for God to use. That's who he's coming back for, that church. You and me. But in the world, ye shall have tribulations. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, we're going to have some tribulations. Yes, we're going to have issues in our lives. It's just tribulations, and, and when we have tribulations, you know, stuff get all over us, and, and, and things happen in our lives, and, and it kind of warps our mind, kind of upsets us and everything. We're, we're, we're all frayed out. We're, we're just messed up and everything. We just don't know what to think, but, but remember, he says, we have peace in him. What about this tribulation? Now, I was looking at this in uh, 2 Timothy. We, 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 know what, we know what 2 Timothy 3 3 and 12 says, and it says, here's what 3 and 12 says, Yea, and in all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall, in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That means that if we're in Christ, we're going to suffer some persecution. But I like to start at verse 10 through 13. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, Paul is writing, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Persecution, afflictions, which came unto me, Paul says, at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all, guess what? The Lord delivered me. He says, the Lord delivered me. Then, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Meaning that we're going to suffer some persecution. Things are going to come our way. We ain't going to have no just rose garden all the time. Even, I understand, roses have thorns in them. Or, on them. Verse 13 says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Saints, tribulation is here. We are, we are, we are among this, the trouble of this world. But we have peace in Jesus. Uh, tri tri tribulation is trouble, affliction, 
burdens or persecutions. So yes, we have tribulations coming at us quite often. This body that we have, this body, we have tribulation in this body. We, we, we have we, we have diseases, we have we have issues, we have arthritis, we have bursitis, we have I, I'm beginning to learn a lot more now. One brother told me, welcome to the club, brother. I, I'm, I'm beginning. I, I understand now when when someone is grunting by the getting up. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it hurts. Even sitting down, probably laying down, getting up. Yes. But we still have peace. In all of that, troubles, burdens, afflictions, we still have peace. He says right here that in me ye might have peace. In the world, says, ye shall have tribulation. I looked and talked about this, this peace. And if we have this peace and we have tribulation, Quite often, what happens is that we got to have a sense of, of knowing that, yes, I, I may have this, these issues in my life. I may have the, these persecutions uh, and everything that's coming my way. But, but even though these things are coming my way, I want to know that, that I have some type of or some form of peace uh, in my life that I can stand uh, when everything may be coming my way. And I found right here in, in Philippians, and it, talk, it talked about, in, in Philippians 4 and 7, here's what it talked about. It says uh, in 4 and 7, he says that, and the peace of God, y'all remember that, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. So even though we have trouble in our life, even though persecutions may, may come our way, afflictions may come our way. I, I may be, I may be laid out in a hospital. I may be in a nursing home. I, I may be, I just might be sick at home or whatever the case may be. And things ain't going right at the job and things right not going right in relationships. But look at this right here. But yet he says, you just, look, have peace because you have given all those things up to God. He says, and the peace of God. Which passeth all understanding. Now, when that type of peace of God pass all understanding me, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I got peace. He says this, all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Saints of God, we got to have peace. We got to have that peace of God. We got to have the kind of peace that is in Christ that we can have only through him. Even in the midst of tribulation, even in the midst of troubles, we would have peace. Why? Because you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Why? Because look at this. Not only did he say uh, you might have peace, but in the world you shall have tribulation. He says, but be of good cheer. I, Jesus says, have overcome the world. Y'all see that? I have overcome the world, meaning that the world may be doing all that stuff to us and against us and, and everything else. But Jesus says, I have overcome the world. That's good news, saints. That is good news. What do you mean overcome? Overcome is, is, is to, to conquer, to subdue, uh, to prevail. To get the victory. That is overcoming. Y'all yeah, heard the song. I, I know Evangelist Larry would sing this song if she was in church. And, and uh, we, you know, we learned this song here. It says, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Why? Even though Satan trying to rip it up, trying to take it away. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Joy, happiness today is mine. Yes, we are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Because Jesus Christ says, I have overcome the world. He lets us know also in the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse 37. I'll have to read that if you will. Uh, Romans chapter number chapter number eight verses number I'm gonna read thirty seven through through thirty nine. 
it says this right here. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Y'all see that? He says we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. He says through, through him that loved us. So we are conquerors in Christ. It's Christ that loved us. God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us. Yes, not only to die, but, but he died and three days later he raised with all power in his hand and now he's ascended into heaven. Yes, nay, and all these things, all those issues that, that Paul began to talk to them about, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, he says. You know, when you persuade someone, that means that, 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 that you're telling them a testimony. You let them know that you have been through. And because of that, you can persuade me. I'm going to say, yeah, now I see, I know, I understand. And that's what we are to do. We are to persuade somebody. Here he says, for I, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God loves us so much, he sent his only begotten son for us, for me, when we take it personally. Yes, we are overcomers you are an overcomer yes why because God loves us God loved us so much that he gave his only son I want to share with us a couple of more verses here out of first out of first John you see John he he wrote some things and and he didn't finish with the gospel of John he went out and wrote some letters too so in in in, in uh, first John chapter 2 he says this right here First John chapter number two, and I'm going to read verses verse 12 through 17. Take a listen to this. First John chapter number two. He says, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you fathers because you have known him. That is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children. Because ye have known the Father. We are to teach them all. Verse 14. I have written unto you fathers. Because ye have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men. Because you are strong. And the word of God abideth in you. That means uh, remain or stay. And ye have overcome the wicked one. 15. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All the bling and everything else, don't, 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 get, don't get bothered by that stuff. That's all it is. Because everything that's shine ain't gold, right? And then he goes on in, in verse 16, For all that is in the world, the, just of the, uh, the, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. Verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We are overcomers. Yes, we are. We are, over, we are overcomers. I want us to stay in 1 John right there, if you happen to have your Bibles. And right there in chapter number 1 John 4, uh, and verse number 4. This would be familiar to us too. So not only are we overcomers and all those things, but look at verse 4 of chapter 4 of 1 John. He says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in uh, the world. Y'all catch that? Than he that is in the world. That means that we have Jesus Christ inside of us. How is he inside of us? By way of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He is in us. And that's how we overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in us. And we feed the Holy Spirit with the word of God. That's what we do. We feed the Holy Spirit with the word of God. That means that just like you get a three course meal. Well, main course. We get. It's just like you get fed. 
We feed the Holy Spirit, okay, with the word of God. We're supposed to feed him as often as possible. We feed him, you know. We feed if somebody feed that plant, I forgot that plant's name, said feed me. Well, we need to feed the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have to always ask because we need to just start feeding him. You know, we get those things on our phones, you know, different people send prayers, they send scripture, and, and they have different things, uh, apps and everything like you can get. And you can just, just take a minute to read those and just, just meditate on it for a couple of minutes and everything, then go about your way. But you're doing with your feet, you're feeding him. You're feeding him. And then when issues come up in our lives, the word of God comes back, comes back up like a like a fountain and everything like that. You know, uh, just like a well, well of water. There's a song, well of water. Uh, he's a well of water in my soul. He's a well of living water in my soul. He's a well of water in my soul. He's a well of living water in my soul. Let's sing that 10 times. You, you get that one. Yes. Well, we are overcomers in in him. I would like to just say that because of what Jesus Christ have done for us, he wasn't done with us. He wasn't through. He, he continued to, to talk to the father for us. He cares for us. In the next chapter, Jesus began to pray to the father. He began to look up to heaven as, as the scripture says here. And begin to pray and say that his work is finished. And, and he tells the Heavenly Father to, to now glorify him. And, and we know that when he went to the cross, uh, he was glorified. Yes, it, the cross was mean and everything. But, but, but what people did not know is that that was glorification for Jesus Christ. Knowing that he is the Christ, the Messiah. And he died for us on that tree. Whoever hangeth on a tree shall be a, be a curse. And Jesus was cursed for us. All of our sins were nailed on a cross. All of them. And when he became a sin for us, he became a sin for you. And because of that, you are an overcomer. And then, and then he, he died and then he was buried and rose the third day with all power in his hand. And, and then he said he'll send a comforter to us. Then he said, don't you have him? Amen. The comforter. He's in us. He, he, he said he would do it and he did it. We're saved. We accept that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We were repent of our sins, and and the Holy Spirit He resides in us. He lives in us, and we are. It's our, it's our job to grow Him, to to continue to feed Him. And so continue to be. He's already great, but continue to feed Him with the Word of God. He says in verse seventeen, uh, chapter seventeen of John. I want to just read read this because it applies to us, y'all. I'm going to just start at verse uh, number 12. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word, and the world ha have hated them. The world hates us, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Look at verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Gee, yeah, he said it. Don't take them out of the world, because he got a mission for us. He says, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy truth, thy word is truth. Thy word, your word, sanctify, set aside. His word is truth. We get the word in us, amen. Then we'll know that we're sanctified. We'll know that we're saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. We get that word in us. It's not about what people do. It's about what's inside of us because what's in us is going to come out. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. He sent us, y'all. We are missionaries for Jesus. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. But for them also which 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 shall believe on me through their word. Meaning that we get the word out there, folk gonna hang on to the word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me. That they may be made perfect in one and, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. 
that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Saints of God, amen, the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ abides in us. We got work to do. Yep. The love abides in us. So we have to tell boys, girls, men, women that Jesus loves them, that God loves them, that we got to tell them, amen, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That so whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We've got to tell them and we've got to love them. Regardless, we got to love them, saints, just as God loved us by giving his son and his son loved us by giving his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And because of that, you, my friend, are an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Why? Because of what Jesus did. He overcame the world. And whatever come our way, whatever come our way, God is bigger than that thing. Jesus is bigger than that thing. Listen to this. The Holy Ghost is bigger than that thing. Meaning you have peace even in the midst of those situations. That's peace, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. We're gonna pray once again. And after we pray, we're gonna have communion. Dear God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, God, uh, showing us that we are an overcomer. Teach us, oh God, how to strengthen the Holy Spirit by applying the word to us. Show us, oh God, how to love one another, whether they are in the world or not. Yes, the world hates us, but yet you tell us to love everybody. So God, we thank you. We give you all praise and all glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Are you ready for communion? We're gonna have communion. Uh, I have my uh, cracker and, and juice right here. Uh, I got mine right here. We're going to have communion. And when, I, when we have communion, we do it because of the fact that Jesus says, continue to do this until he comes back. He said, in remembrance of me. And I have grape juice and I have the piece of cracker here. I pray that you already have your bread or cracker and, and you have your juice, uh, whatever it may be, uh, of the vine. And we just thank God for you taking the time out uh, for this. So once again, this communion is for all those who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, all you have to do is give your life to him. It's repent. Uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Read Romans chapter number 10. Amen. Talk to somebody uh, about that. And you will have peace, which surpasses all understanding. You won't understand what's going on, but you have peace. While everyone else is going kind of bonkers, you'll have peace. So, the communion. We will bless this table after I read this passage of scripture. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, 
that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I when I come. We're going to bless the table and the bread. Dear God, we just ask that you may bless God uh, these communion pieces, God. The bread represent your body broken. The juice representing, God, your blood uh, that was shed for us. God, we thank you. We love you. We ask you to bless it in, na in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Here we go. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in, remem in remembrance of me. Let's eat the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Truly a blessing. Amen. Uh, to have communion together with you. Yes, it was the blood. It was the blood. Um, I'm not going to sing it. But everyone knows it's the blood, who, uh, the blood that was shed for us, the blood, the blood of Jesus. But it does say, I know it was the blood. And then now he's not only did he say, I know it was the blood that was uh, one day when I was lost. He died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. He never said a mumbling word. That's right. They nailed him to the tree. Yep. They pierced him in the side. Mm -hmm. He hung his head and died. They laid him in the tomb. That's right. He rose up from the grave. He reigns as king of kings. I know it was the blood. <laughs> yeah, I was ready this time. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. And next Sunday, we look forward to Evangelist Lair uh, coming and blessing us with the word of God. Amen. We just look forward to what God has in store for us. I'm going to have surgery on Wednesday, so I'm not going to be able to, to make it next Sunday. And uh, we just thank God for each and every one of you for tuning in. Please continue to do so. Uh, continue to be blessed. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Go in peace.